When soldiers fought across the muddy fronts of World War II, one of the deadliest threats they faced wasn't gunfire or bombs. It was contaminated water. Entire divisions fell sick from dysentery, typhoid, and cholera long before they ever saw the enemy. Clean water could mean the difference between life and death, but with bombed pipelines, destroyed wells, and supply routes cut off, safe drinking water became a luxury. Out of this desperation came one of the most overlooked survival techniques of the entire war, a simple, field-tested water purification method that still works perfectly today. It required no fancy chemicals, no modern filters, and no electricity, just a handful of ash and a bit of patience. During the war, soldiers and medics quickly learned that fire wasn't only for warmth or cooking. The ash left behind after burning wood became a crucial survival resource. In field camps from the Pacific jungles to the ruins of Europe, troops began using wood ash to make water safer to drink. It wasn't as quick as boiling, but it had two major advantages. It removed impurities that boiling couldn't and required almost no fuel once the ash was collected. What they were unknowingly doing was creating a primitive filtration and disinfection system based on one of the oldest chemical principles, alkalinity. When ash is mixed with water, it produces a mild alkaline solution, essentially a form of lye water. This alkaline environment is hostile to most bacteria and viruses. Soldiers would stir fine, cooled wood ash into muddy or stagnant water, let it sit for several hours, and then strain it through a cloth. The ash bound with heavy metals and organic matter, pulling them out of suspension and settling them at the bottom. What remained was clearer, safer water. In many cases, it was followed by a second filtration through sand or charcoal. It was simple chemistry meeting battlefield necessity. Charcoal, another byproduct of fire, became the second part of this purification system. Charred wood has an incredible ability to absorb toxins, trap microorganisms, and filter out odors. Soldiers discovered that layering charcoal and ash together inside a makeshift filter, sometimes just a sock, tin can, or hollow bamboo segment, produced water that was not only drinkable, but, you know, surprisingly clean-tasting. The process mimicked what modern activated carbon filters do today, except it was achieved with whatever was at hand, burned wood, sand, and, well, gravity. The process wasn't perfect. But you know, it was effective enough to save lives in desperate situations. It removed sediments, reduced pathogens, and even improved the flavor of stagnant water. To make it practical, here's how it was typically done. First, soldiers would collect ash from a clean wood fire. No treated lumber, no painted material, nothing contaminated with fuel or oil. The finer the ash, the better. Then they'd pour about a cup of ash into a bucket or canteen of murky water, stir thoroughly, and leave it undisturbed for several hours. During this time, the ash absorbed impurities and forced particles to settle. Once the water cleared, they would pour it gently through a layer of cloth or even grass to catch floating debris. For those with more time and materials, the next step was filtration through layers of sand, charcoal, and gravel each one trapping smaller and smaller impurities. The result was water that looked clean, smelled neutral, and was far safer to drink than the raw source. In modern survival situations, this same method can be a valuable backup when traditional filters or purification tablets run out. Wood ash is easy to create anywhere a fire can be built. If stranded or cut off from clean supplies, a small campfire and a simple container can reproduce the exact wartime technique. The key is using clean hardwood ash, oak, 
maple or fruitwood works best, and avoiding anything treated or synthetic. After the ash settles, straining the water through fine cloth, coffee filters, or even layers of sand greatly improves the result. And just like soldiers did decades ago, boiling afterward provides an extra layer of safety, ensuring pathogens are fully destroyed. What makes this method remarkable isn't just its simplicity, but, you know, its scientific soundness. The ashes' alkaline properties neutralize acidity, reduce microbial activity, and bind to many contaminants. The process actually mimics natural purification systems found in soil layers, where water trickles through mineral-rich earth before emerging in springs. In a sense, those World War II soldiers recreated a mini-version of the Earth's filtration system under battlefield pressure. It's a process that still works today, especially for those who prefer self-reliance and, well, off-grid survival techniques. There are even peacetime stories of this method being rediscovered. In rural villages during the post-war years, farmers and travellers often used the same ash and charcoal filters to clean rainwater collected from rooftops or ponds. The technique persisted because it worked, and because it required no money, no factory parts, just a bit of understanding of natural chemistry. In field tests conducted decades later, researchers confirmed that ash-based water treatment could remove turbidity, neutralize acidic water, and even absorb traces of heavy metals like lead. This World War II innovation carries a powerful message for anyone studying survival, history, or, you know, sustainability. It reminds us that the key to resilience often lies in ancient, resourceful knowledge rather than modern convenience. Soldiers who had no choice but to adapt proved that even in the harshest conditions, survival depended on observation and ingenuity, not equipment. Now, for those who want to apply this today, it's honestly a method worth practicing safely. In a controlled outdoor setting, you might collect a small amount of clean wood ash and try filtering muddy water through a makeshift system using sand, charcoal and cloth. Now, just take a moment to observe how the ash clarifies the water, how the charcoal removes the odour and, well, how nature's chemistry does the rest. You see, it's not only a historical experiment, but a valuable survival skill that connects you directly to the past. This forgotten method isn't just a curiosity of wartime history. It's really a testament to human adaptability. It proves that survival doesn't always come from technology, but from understanding the resources right in front of us. So, the next time you build a fire or see ash in the hearth, remember that in another time and place that same ash helped save lives. If you value learning about these lost techniques, real, practical knowledge from those who endured the hardest conditions, make sure to subscribe to Backyard Wisdom. Share this story with others who respect the ingenuity of the past. Because, you know, the lessons that kept soldiers alive in the mud and cold of war might one day help someone else survive when it matters most.